Welcome to our Online. In the previous video, we showed you that when you place an atom in a magnetic field, you experience what we call the Zeeman effect, which means that a electron, which is normally in orbit around the nucleus that has a particular orientation, at least the angular momentum has a particular orientation, that once you put a magnetic field around it, you can see that the orientation can change and that the change has to be in quantum jumps. Very unique, particular locations or orientations that the angular momentum can have. And so that results then in a slightly different energy difference between the energy levels, between the principal quantum number energy levels, when electrons jump between those two levels. And that is then visible through a small change in the spectrum, which shows that the photons emitted sometimes have slightly higher or slightly lower energies than expected, or slightly higher and slightly lower frequencies. And so now what we're going to do is try to calculate the magnitude of that Zeeman effect. How much of a difference in the energy level is that? So what we see here is that if there's no magnetic field applied, there's no difference in the energy level. So let's say that E sub naught is a particular energy level of a particular quantum number. Now what happens is when you apply a magnetic field, all of a sudden you can see that there's going to be a split. And in this case, we're going to assume that we have a value for L equals 2, which means there can be a total of five different energy levels or five different splits caused by that Zeeman effect. And the amount depends on two things. First of all, the, the orbital magnetic quantum number, because when L equals 2, there could be five different values for the orbital magnetic quantum number, so therefore we have five different levels, and the strength of the magnetic field, and that's the key. As the magnetic field becomes stronger, the energy differences become stronger as well. So it's going to be calculated in terms of U sub naught. So this is the magnetic moment multiplied times the strength of the field. And the magnetic moment depends upon what the M sub L is. So we're going to start with the basic concept of the magnetic moment. It is equal to the charge of the electron times H bar divided by twice times the mass of the electron. And we can also write it that the difference in the energy is equal to minus E, so there's always this minus sign in front of it, divided by 2 M sub L, or M sub E, I should say, the mass of the electron, times L sub Z. Again, that's the angular momentum of the electron, and it can be 0, 1 H bar, 2 H bar, or 0, minus 1 H bar, minus 2 H bar, depending upon if it's an adding, an, an additional, or depending upon the value of the orbital magnetic quantum number. Now, the L sub z's are calculated by taking the angle of momentum and multiplying times the cosine of the angle caused by the change in the orientation due to the application of the magnetic field. And of course, we're going to assume that we have an, uh, an axis that is parallel to the applied magnetic field, and then of course the angle of momentum um, the angle momentum directions are going to be determined by the angle theta, which can be calculated uh, as we saw in some previous video. Now, what is the value of that magnetic moment? Well, we have here the classical sense of it, where we have a current going around the circle right here. The circle has an area A, and we have a perpendicular to that area, which we call the unit normal vector. So the magnetic moment can then be calculated as the product of the current times the area in vector format or the current times the magnitude of the area times the unit normal vector. For an electron and a hydrogen atom, we call that the Bohr magneton. And the Bohr magneton is defined as the negative of the, electric, the electron charge, h bar, which is h divided by 2 pi, divided by 2, divided by the mass of the electron. If we plug in the numbers, you can see that the Bohr magneton, which is essentially the magnetic moment for an electron in a hydrogen atom in the lowest energy level, is equal to 9.274 times 10 to the minus 24 joules per tesla. Per tesla is because as we increase, of course, the strength of magnetic field, the Bohr magneton is going to get more, uh, is going to get stronger or bigger. And if we convert that into electron volts, which is something we're a little bit more used to, you can see it's about 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 electron volts. Knowing that the energy jumps between the energy levels in the hydrogen atoms are in the order of 
a several electron volts or a fraction of an electron volt, you can see that this is a very small quantity relative to that. So the Zeeman effect is just a very small effect in the overall energy difference between those energy jumps in the hydrogen atom. So again, the difference in the energy is equal to the Bohr magneton times the strength of the electric field when you do the dot product, which is the strength of the Bohr magneton times the strength of the magnetic field times the cosine of the angle between them. Of course, if the angle is zero, it's 90 degrees, then the cosine of 90 is zero, and then you have no change in the energy level. That's this one right here. But then if you do have um, an angle, then you can see, depending upon what the value is on the m sub l, the orbital magnetic quantum number, you can see that the, the difference in the energy will increase as the strength of the field increases. But this is the calculation you need to figure out what the effect is in terms of electron volts per Tesla. Then as you increase the strength of the magnetic field, it will increase. And then, of course, if you go to m sub l equals 2, then you have to double that value. So you multiply this value by 2 to get the strength of the, uh, the effect of the Zeeman effect for m sub l equals 2. And that's how you calculate the effect of the Zeeman effect.